What's up, everybody? Welcome back. We're here with a special Saturday edition of some NFL DFS picks and lineup advice, this time for the single-game showdown slate on DraftKings and FanDuel, Detroit Lions, Dallas Cowboys. Yes, the special Saturday night showdown slate. Welcome. I'm Brian Jester, co-founder here at Occupy Fantasy, single-game million-dollar winner, here to give you the injuries that impact tonight's showdown slate, low-risk lineup construction tips, and those strategies to help you win the biggest prizes on both DraftKings and FanDuel. Now, this is one of the final showdown videos of the season. I believe we will have a Monday night game for the playoffs, and I don't think any other island games outside of Sunday night in Week 18. So, one of your final chances to get a showdown video from us. But let's not waste any more time. Before we get into the information for tonight's game, I do want to shout out Sean Hart, who has been one of our followers and commenters and viewers of these videos all season. He's been grinding and uh, took down $12,000 in the Thursday night game using some of the advice he got here in this video. So, Sean, shout out to you. I know you've been grinding. So, uh, big ups to you. And, uh, yeah, let's see if we can get another big hit for one of you tonight. So, let's go back to DraftKings. And we'll start with the injuries on both sides. Not too many injuries that we have to be concerned with tonight. On Detroit's side, their starting corner, Cam Sutton, is extremely questionable. Did not practice on Friday or Saturday, Thursday. Saturday games got my schedule all messed up. Did not practice on Thursday, which was the final practice day of the week for the Lions. Report came out this morning that he is a true game time decision. Detroit doesn't know if he's going to suit up. Obviously, that would be a boost for their outside receiver, C.D. Lamb, uh, Brandon Cooks, and even to a lesser extent, Michael Gallup and Jalen Tolbert. Also on Detroit's side... No, that's it. That's all we got for Detroit. It's just Cam Sutton now. It's, it's early on Saturday morning, so stick with me here. Do the video. Uh, on Dallas' side, we have a little bit more of an impact. Rico Daddle, their number two running back. Let's scroll down here. Here he is. $4,200. He is out. And if you've played Tony Pollard all season, if you've played some of the Cowboys showdown slates, you know that Dowdle gets a decent amount of work, right? Anywhere from three to six, maybe more, depending on the game script touches. Obviously, 10-plus snaps per game in relief of Tony Pollard. Uh, but Dowdle is going to be out tonight. Now, we would expect, maybe if this was earlier in the season, Malik Davis, their number three running back, would be elevated from the practice squad. And he would fill the Dowdle role in the same type of mold as Dowdle. However, Malik Davis is out of practice squad elevations. Not to get too deep into roster stuff in the NFL, but you're allowed to be elevated from the practice squad three different times during the season. And Davis has used all three. If they wanted to use him tonight, they would have to sign him to the active roster and cut someone else. It doesn't sound like they're going to do that. I guess we will find out later today if that is the case, but most reporters do not expect that to be the case. So instead, after Tony Pollard, the Cowboys have Deuce Vaughn, who I know many of you were drafting in best ball drafts all summer. Deuce Vaughn, kind of a scat back type of player, looked great in the preseason, uh, but undersized, will he fill the Dowdle role? That is questionable. They talked to head coach Mike McCarthy on his radio show, I believe it was Friday, and they asked him, and he said, Deuce is going to be the number two guy. We have a plan for him. Not really sure what that means. It just sounds like maybe they have some design plays for him or they have a, a plan in mind of how much they want to use him. I'm skeptical that they use him as much as Rico Dowdle just based on his size and based on the magnitude of this game when Vaughn hasn't really played much outside of garbage time. They also have Hunter Lepke, whose name I believe I'm pronouncing probably incorrectly, but I also have not heard his name said out loud ever in my life. Uh, but he's kind of a fullback running back hybrid. He might get a couple snaps here and there. So maybe for super deep tournament plays, maybe he gets more snaps over Deuce Vaughn. Either way, all of this leads to Tony Pollard likely having a massive workload tonight. And yes, I know Pollard has been a huge disappointment this year. But we can't ask for much more than as a home favorite with the number two running back who typically steals work out of the lineup. Will Pollard do anything with it? That's a bigger question. But Pollard will have a pretty monster workload tonight, I would imagine. Uh, makes him a pretty good play at his price tag. Probably the more impactful injury for the Cowboys offense overall, though, is the health of their left tackle, Tyron Smith. He missed has missed a couple of games. It sounds like he is good to go. He was questionable. But if you read between the lines, and I don't, even, I don't even know if you have to read between the lines. I think they flat out said that he's feeling good to go. So we're expecting Tyron Smith to suit up. If he is out, that would be an upgrade to the Detroit defense. 
and it would certainly be a downgrade to the Dallas offense. One of the biggest players in the NFL when it comes to non-quarterbacks and the production of their offense, but it does sound like Tyron Smith will play tonight for Dallas. All right, now let's talk about low-risk lineups, 50-50s, double-ups, head-to-heads, just have to beat half the field to double your money. Typically, as we outline in our showdown guide on our site, as we talk about in these videos, there are two strategies generally to accomplish that. You lock up all the scoring by playing both quarterbacks and both running backs. That way, if there is a touchdown scored in the game, whenever there are touchdowns, you likely have a piece of it with those four players, or you play the obvious values. So on DraftKings, it is difficult to lock up all the scoring tonight because of, one, the pricing, but two, you're also leaving out CeeDee Lamb and Amon Ross St. Brown in that strategy, high volume, high target receivers, high fantasy scores, and on a PPR site like DraftKings with the bonuses, not having one of these guys if they go off in low-risk contests pretty much buries you. So if we tried to go with our normal approach, just, just stay with me here for a sec. Golf, Gibbs has been getting more work than Montgomery, more work in the pass game, so Jameer Gibbs over David Montgomery. Tony Pollard, 3450 left per player. Now, Deuce Vaughn, just because we don't expect him to get a ton of run, doesn't mean he's not a value on DraftKings because he is priced all the way down at 1K. So near minimum price for Deuce Vaughn, going to be extremely popular in low-risk contests in small field GPPs and will be the most popular player beneath the kickers in large field GPPs as well for the most part. That leaves you with 5900 per player, sort of a, a weird price gap to try to fill in your last player. Could go with Brandon Cooks, Brandon Aubrey, but again, you're still leaving out C.D. Lamb. You're leaving out Amara St. Brown. So it makes it extremely difficult on DraftKings tonight to, to build a comfortable low-risk lineup. In addition to Vaughn, by the way, the other obvious value is Jamison Williams, who has been functioning as their number two receiver, running more routes than Josh Reynolds as of late, and he's going to be extremely popular at $3,400. So if you're trying to build a low risk lineup on DraftKings or as you're looking for a core to build your high risk lineups around while you mix in some low owned plays, it is these five guys, the quarterbacks and the running backs. It is CeeDee Lamb, Amon Ross St. Brown, and it is Jamison Williams. So a good group of guys there, seven, eight guys to build your lineups around. And then you can always rotate in high risk contests, whichever low owned plays or lineup constructions where you want to get different. Now, surprisingly, on FanDuel, it is much easier to create a low-risk lineup than it is on DraftKings, which is basically never the case. Let's go over here. And on FanDuel, you don't feel as bad about leaving out CeeDee Lamb, Amon Ross St. Brown because of the half-point PPR scoring, the lack of bonuses, no salary multipliers. You can leave out the stud wide receivers on FanDuel and low-risk a lot more frequently than you can on DraftKings. So if we go with the normal strategy, typically we can never do this. Right, We play both quarterbacks, both running backs. Typically, we have like $1,500 left over. Here, with this pricing, we actually have 9 k left. So you can actually fit in both quarterbacks, both running backs, and then you can round it out with Brandon Cooks, one of the kickers, defense, Jamison Williams, Gallup, whoever you think. And if you want Montgomery over Gibbs, you think Montgomery has higher touchdown equity? Let's look at this. That leaves you with 10 k You can even upgrade to Aubrey or Jake Ferguson. So low risk is actually pretty nice tonight on FanDuel, which is something we don't say very often based on their pricing, but it actually works out a lot better than DraftKings tonight. All right, let's go back over to, to DraftKings here, and let's talk about high-risk contests. Let's get a sip of water in. Maybe two sips. All right. I think there are two clear strategies that stand out as head and shoulders above the rest for high risk contests tonight. So GPP, small field or large field, uh, leagues, satellites, any contest where there are exponential payouts. The first one is the easy, easy, easy leverage with Detroit captains and MVPs. Our projected ownership for both sites has Dallas players, and maybe rightfully so, as near touchdown home favorites. But C.D. Lamb, Pollard, Dak, Going to take up a ton of ownership in the captain spots and the MVP spots on DraftKings and FanDuel. While we see guys like Jared Goff, especially on FanDuel, Amon Ross St. Brown, both Detroit running backs, Sam Laporta, who's been known to have <clears throat> multi-touchdown games, as mostly sub-10% owned in the captain and MVP spot. So easily, right off the bat, very easy is to play Detroit captains in your player pool, fade the Dallas guys, hope that one of the one of the Detroit guys is the highest scoring player on the slate, which is not unreasonable at all. It's not like we're talking Jets, or it's not like we're talking 
uh, Raiders, and it's like we need one of these huge underdogs to be the top scorer. That is not inconceivable on a slate when you have an offense as high-powered as Detroit. So easy leverage and actually good leverage, not something we have to manufacture, is playing Detroit captains and MVPs heavily in your high-risk lineups. Let me pull up my notes here. The other point of leverage, and if you've been playing defenses heavily the past few slates, as we've been outlining with the lower total games, you absolutely love playing defenses in a higher total game. Now, the benefit tonight is the ownership. If I can find them here. There we go. Lions Cowboys. We have both of these teams projected for less than 10% ownership on DraftKings and FanDuel. No one wants to play a defense when the game total is high, when you have high powered offenses. However, yes, it was the Browns and Jets the other night, but all it takes is a fumble six, a pick six, and these defenses are optimal. If we've seen Jared Goff games in the past, we've seen Dak on primetime sometimes, these quarterbacks aren't infallible. Like These defenses can score 10-plus points in this matchup. And ideally, when there are a bunch of pass attempts, you have more opportunities for sacks, turnovers, and defensive touchdowns. So easy, if you don't like any of the other lower-owned plays on the slate, throw in a defense, and they're going to be extremely low-owned. You can play pretty chalky with the rest of your lineup. That way, I mean, when you have the opportunity for 10-plus points reasonably, from a 5%, a 7% owned play, that is can often be the key in high-risk contests. And the same goes for FanDuel as well. So two strategies tonight. Play Detroit players and captain MVP heavily. Look at the defenses. And yes, they may score one or two points, right? But we're playing this for the leverage, for the low ownership, because their upside does not match their ownership on a slate like this. And I know a lot of you, especially since uh, uh, Sean benefited from me talking about some of the lower priced players, especially Kenny Yaboa in the Thursday game. Let's just talk about some of these guys and their roles. I will talk about them on DraftKings, but they apply to FanDuel as well. These are players that are priced below the kickers and defenses on DraftKings. So Jamison Williams, we've talked about as the now number two receiver for Detroit. Josh Reynolds has had a small bump down since the beginning of the season, still running 20-ish routes. So definitely a good play and a great direct pivot off of Jamison Williams in high-risk contests. Michael Gallup ran more routes than Jalen Tolbert last week, which the, the two of them have been alternating, kind of splitting these wide receiver three snaps. Not sure if that's an indication of what's to come. Either way, Gallup is preferred over Tolbert tonight. But Tolbert's still going to run 15-plus routes himself on a high-powered offense, so we like him at 2400 Uh Khalif Raymond, $2,200, technically the wide receiver four, but they don't use their number two tight end a ton in Detroit. So Khalif Raymond is going to run 10, 15, maybe even 20 routes, depending on the game script. So you have to like him as well in high-risk contests. Kevontae Turpin is a guy, obviously they use him on offense a bit. He is their primary kick returner. I'm wondering if they use him a little more in the backfield tonight without Rico Dowdle. Pure speculation on my part, but just another checkbox to maybe add Kevontae Turpin to your player pool. Uh, the backup tight ends are for Dallas. Uh, Hendershot and Shoemaker are running five routes each, 150 max contest. Only Donovan People Jones, 150 max only. He's their wide receiver, five, a couple of routes. And that's really about it. James Mitchell's now the number two tight end for Detroit with Brock Wright out. Maybe he's a guy you throw into the mix. No one we're as excited about because both these teams have pretty tight rotations. But the nice thing about it is because everyone is flocking to Deuce Vaughn and Jamison Williams, you'll get guys who are going to run 15-plus routes when typically these types of guys will be 20%-plus owned on another showdown slate. All of them will be 10% or less tonight in Josh Reynolds, Michael Gallup, Jalen Tolbert, Khalif Raymond, Kevontae Turpin. So you don't have to dive as deep on this slate as maybe another slate just because we get direct ownership leverage when there are other popular guys like Vaughn and Jamison Williams. So to recap, low risk is difficult on DraftKings. FanDuel is actually much easier tonight to fit in both quarterbacks and both running backs. Detroit players are excellent leverage at captain and MVP on both sites. Defenses, mega leverage at low ownership in a high total game. And we get plenty of ownership discount on guys who will play a decent amount in that 1K to 3K range on DraftKings if you exclude Deuce Vaughn and Jamison Williams, who are rightfully great values and should be played in most contest types. But if you're making a bunch of lineups, you want to pivot away from those guys. We have realistic options on both uh, Dallas and Detroit to get away from Vaughn and Jamison Williams.
So that'll do it for this video. We will actually have a daily plug for this slate at OccupyFantasy.com. A writer Bismo will have that up sometime this afternoon. If you're watching this later this afternoon, it's likely already posted. The link is in the description below. Ranks every player for different contest types for DraftKings and FanDuel. Lineup constructions for different contests on different sites. Overall slate notes, contest selection tips. Everything you need goes way more in-depth than I do in these videos. So check that out after you watch this. Our Occupy model is up and running with all the projected ownership that I've been referencing referencing in this video. So make sure you check that out. And the lineup builder, which I use every slate, no matter if I'm building one lineup or 300 lineups, allows you to build showdown lineups with our optimal lineup criteria. So that'll do it for this video. We still will have playoff and week 18 videos. So make sure you're subscribed here on YouTube. It is free to do so. Just click subscribe. That way you get notified whenever we go live, whenever we upload any videos. Uh, yes, it helps us out, but it'll help you out as well. Give us that thumbs up. We appreciate that. And any questions, I'm home all day. Go ahead and drop a comment or question in the YouTube comments below, and we will happily get back to you. So if I don't talk to you, I probably won't. Before tomorrow, Happy New Year out there to everyone, and good luck in tonight's Cowboys and Lions showdown sleep.